All right, good morning, everyone. Today should be, class should be in the memory of Chaim Menachem Mandel ben Devore Zahal. Uh, he passed away today, and this class should be a, um, a memory for his name and the merit of his name. That's also the charity. Let's close one second. Here we go. There's charity. Uh, charity saves from all the bad things in the world, and it brings the future redemption. So let's do give charity. Nothing like giving to others. Seeing that everything we have is what God gave us and gives us. Good. Good. Now, just one moment. But we're going back to. <clears throat> Continue what we learned yesterday. Now let's, let's bring the sentence over here. We go here. Sentence is based like this: Atem Nitzavim. This is Moses speaking to the Jewish people. You are standing today, all of you, in front of God, your God, the heads of the tribes, the elders, the policemen. Every every Jewish person, every Jewish person. Let's see. Let's go one more. Your children. Your, the women, the converts that are in your camp from the choppers of wood until the drawers of water. But this is the beginning of this week's Torah portion. One more sentence. Why? To make a covenant with you. Hashem <clears throat> Elokecha. To make a covenant with God and also in the curses, we had the curses just before. Asher Hashem Karat Imchayom that God made with you today. Okay, good. So we have, if you count them, there's ten different types of Jews, which the Rebbe said that refers to all the different levels of the soul, each and every person, ten levels of the soul, <clears throat> and God did it all in to, to make a covenant with us, a brit. <clears throat> and the Rebbe explained what exactly is this covenant that he made. First of all, let's go back to where we were before. Here we go. So it said, you are standing today. It means two things. It means every Jewish person. And it means all of the Jewish people together. Like one big body. And they're all together. This is to elevate all of the life force, the sparks, which are in all the souls, that they should realize their source, that we're Jews. And what a Jew is. And a Jew is one that has a special, deep connection with the Creator. With the Creator. And the Rebbe said, the way this is done is several steps. First of all, action. Number one, the most simple Jew is connected to the highest level. It's like a, like a ring. The top of the ring is connected to the bottom. So it's all one is no higher and lower. Just like a body Every part of your body is you. Maybe there's more impressive parts of your body, more essential parts of your body, but it's still part of your body. So the same thing, those <clears throat> Jews that are the like feet and they have no Torah, they have no commandments, have, but nevertheless, a foot is also an essential part of a person, right? And not, let's say, essential part, but it's, it's part of the person. A person wouldn't want to lose his foot or his toe. It's part of him. And that's the idea of Shema Yisrael. Shema means to gather together. You gather together all of the Jews, and also all of the aspects of your soul. Because every Jew is a microcosm of the whole world, microcosm of the whole entire world. But also, <clears throat> in addition to that, is every Jew is part of the macrocosm. So you have to gather all the Jews together, right? <clears throat> so every Jew is a part of a bigger entity. And on the other hand, every Jew is a whole entire world. He mirrors the entity, okay? So first of all, we talked in a general way. All the Jewish people all together, all are united on this day. And he says, by the way, what day is it that he's talking about? You are standing today. It's talking about Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah is the day that God created man. And God created man, 5,700. And as of this speech, as of this class, 5,785 5, years ago, missing a couple of weeks. <clears throat> and so... 
that, that to remind us who we are, that we are also the same thing. We're being created by God, just like Adam was created by God. It's just that Adam didn't have a mother and father, so it came more directly by God. But we do have mothers and fathers, but the fact is it's still God creating us. He's creating our parents also. Okay. So what if you have a problem connecting to this? What if you have a problem connecting to this? Just one moment, one moment. Just one moment. Let's see if I can do this over here. One moment. I could have stopped it here. So he stopped. All right. <clears throat> all right. So here it goes. Atem, you are standing today. And this is talking about all of the Jewish people together. They're all part of one big body. And they're all uniting. Okay. But in an, indiv in individual, in an individual way. And an individual way, as every Jew also has to unite with his source. And that's called doing tshuva. Doing tshuva means realizing where your source is, that you're being created by God, and you're being created by God for a purpose every single instant. Every single instant. Says the Rebbe, that's not so easy to do. It's very easy to write and to say, but to actually do it. Because to write it down, that's an objective thing. You're just putting ink on a paper. You're putting your ideas outside of you. But here we're talking about changing your actual self, your whole value system, your whole, your whole life, your whole being. How can you just change your whole life instead of thinking about yourself, which is the most natural thing in the world? You think about your creator. The God is creating you, which is the most unnatural thing in the world. You can't feel you're being created. And do that. So that's what it says that God did it in order. It said God made a covenant. That's this covenant that we're talking about. Where is this? So we saw the covenant. Here we go. It says. No, 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 no. I got the wrong sentence. I'm sorry. One second. Uh. Oh, I see. I see what here, here, no. It said, God did it in order to pass you through a covenant. What's a covenant? A covenant is that two people, that they want to remain friends for all time, even though they're, they know that there's going to be reasons to separate them, but they want to hold on to that love and, and friendship that they had uh, at the time when they make the covenant, and they know that that's something genuine. So therefore, they make a covenant. And that covenant, a brit, means that no matter what happens, we'll always remember this essential love. It's the same thing with us and with God. Same thing as with us and with God. That God made a covenant with us. And that covenant gives us power. This gives us power because he's helping us all the time. And he'll never leave us. And when we remember that, we feel that, that gives us power to <clears throat> unite with, uh, with uh, our, our, her pur pur purpose, our purpose in, in life. Our purpose in life. And that's our soul. <clears throat> that's, so to speak, the covenant. Okay. Nine, behold, Omar is all the rabbi. Say, Omar Kodesh Bruhu. Oh, let's make this bigger a little bit. One second. Here, the rabbi say, but God says like this, say in front of me sentences of kingship in order that I should rule over you. On Rosh Hashanah, on Rosh Hashanah, in the Musaf prayer of Rosh Hashanah, we pray in the middle of it, there's three blessings, three unusual blessings. Rosh Hashanah, first blessing is <clears throat> what's called Zohronos, Ma I'm sorry, Malchus. Malchus. Malchus are ten sentences from the Bible, ten sentences from the Torah, three from the Chumash, and four from the Chumash, and three from Nevi'im, three from Kasuvim, but altogether ten sentences from the Torah that prove that God is a king. And we're bringing these sentences down <clears throat> because we're saying, listen, God, you know, you wrote it yourself. You wrote this down in the Torah. You wrote it. You obligated yourself. You have to be a king. And we bring ten different sentences down saying that, God, you must be a king. Then afterwards, there's that's the first blessing. It's called kingship, malchut. Then there's ten blessings of remembrances to remind God that He should remember us, that we should remember us. So to speak, we are so far <clears throat> away from God's essence that God has to remember us. God has to remember us. On one hand, of course, God creates us and He cares, but on the other hand. When God created the first man, that's Rosh Hashanah. So God said, up to now I did everything, and now I'm putting it all in your hands. And that's us. 
So it's all in our hands. So we have to, so to speak, ask God to remember us. We're so far away from him. He's the creator. He creates the spiritual. And we just, again, to remind everyone, all of the religions in the world that have billions of people that worship, they give their whole lives. They sacrifice their time and their energy and everything they have. And, and they feel as though they're nothing in in, to, in order to connect to some spiritual power, spiritual power. <clears throat> so you can see that all the spiritual powers are tremendously real. If they, if they inspire people to give their whole lives to them. So that's something amazing. Well, the God of Israel creates all these other gods. That's what it says. The first of the 10 commandments, you shouldn't have any other gods. There are all sorts of other, so to speak, gods, all sorts of powers in the world. And they seem to be more real than we are, that they control life, they control the future. They, we, they, they make all sorts of sacrifices to these other gods. Whatever. And we have to realize that God is creating them. So if, if we're far away from these idols, these false gods that all the non-Jews worship, and, and those powers are real powers. It's just that they're not God. They're real powers. If we're far away from them, how far much further away we are from the God who creates those things. And it says even the highest of angels are screaming out to God, God, they're burning up because they realize that God exists and they don't know what it is. They want to just come closer to him. He's so real, so real. That God is so real. So that's why we say remembrances because we're, so to speak, so far away from God. So we ask God to remember us. We're so distant. We're even so to speak, further away from God than the angels, and the angels have no idea what God is, so remember this. And it says, and how do we do it? By the shofar, by sounding the shofar. Okay. Kihine, Rosh Hashanah, the day of Rosh Hashanah is the day that God began to create the world, so to speak. This is a remembrance for the first day. This is the day, on Rosh Hashanah is the sixth day of creation when God created man. God created man on Rosh Hashanah. Let's get this thing over here. God created man for Adam on, on Rosh Hashanah. That's what we Jews have been celebrating for thousands of years, 3,000 years. Omar Hashem, God's, and, and, Omar, and, 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 and Adam said, as soon as he was created, so all the animals and the angels and everything, they said, well, you're God. And he said, no, I'm not a God. I'm not God. He said, God created me. God is even greater than me. And that was his whole purpose. Adam's whole purpose was to direct the entire creation to the creator. That's what he says. God is a king. Deus lovish. God is a king, and he puts on a garment of highness. The fisha ans, because then when God puts on a garment, then he can reveal himself. Like you want to look at a, a, the, the sun, right? You look at the no, eclipse or something, look at the sun through all these <clears throat> veils, these sunglasses and more sunglasses, so you can look directly at the sun. The same thing. And, uh, I mean, it's just, that's just an example. The essence of God can't be in any way grasped, but you can grasp aspects of God, and that's what it means that God puts on garments, because then it could be revealed God's kingship. Now, God's kingship is the power with which he creates the world. Which with you, with the, with, on one hand, that's the lowest thing, because it's part of this, but on the other hand, that's the whole purpose. God did this whole business with the angels and all these powers in order to create the world. So, it says, when God created man, <clears throat> and, and the whole world he created, everything was It was an arousal from above. God did it all himself. You know, it, it, God, everything was just created. God just decided to create, went one after the other. This is incomprehensible, but it's true. And he's doing it now. He's doing it now. But the, the first six days of creation, until man was created, Everything that God did, but now after the sixth day of creation, so now we have to have a remembrance for that first day by means of what? At arousal from below. When we start to realize that our reality is as important as we are to ourselves, but that's just a, a very vague, wispy reality that, <clears throat> that only seems to be separate from God because God puts on this garment. So it says, God, first of all, created the world, and he created the whole world, <clears throat> and the world was infinitely far away from him, so to speak. It was concealed and concealed godliness, so the world seems to be something separate. 
And then he created man on the sixth day. And he said to man, no, you want me to be revealed here? You have to do the work. And man said, well, I don't want, who says you want to be revealed? So God says, I'm going to put that into you also. You're going to have a desire to reveal me in the world. That's what it says, is an arousal from below. Now everything depends on us. You want the truth to be revealed that God is creating us? There has to be a desire from below. And that arouses, that this reveals God's kingship on us. <clears throat> By means of also remembering, remembering the covenant, remembering that breed, that connection that God made, that God connected between God and us. And when we remember that connection, is that gives us power. I know all your day. By means of what? By means of the shofar. When they sound the shofar, as that awakens the essence of this connection of God to the Jewish people. And this is not the same connection as the world. God created the, the, the world <clears throat> from his purposely to be concealed. That's it. But God created the Jews as part of the world, or part of the world. But a part of the world is supposed to reveal the creator. Something like the Holy Temple. There was one room there where the essence of God was revealed. And that is accomplished, says the Rebbe, by means of the shofar. On Rosh Hashanah. This is the aspect of tshuva ilah. This is what's called the upper, re, upper return to God. Why upper return to God? Because it arouses the essence of the soul. This is tzaka al-kol. One type of, of return to God is because you did sins, you feel bad, and therefore you want to repent for the bad things you did. But you get rid of that. You, that's a lower, I'll, I'll change my ways from now on, I'll be different. But the upper screaming out to God is you're screaming out because you're far away. That's how you were created far away. It's not anything that you did. You're just far away from God because that's how he created us. And he created us in order to dispel this distance, this farness. And that's the screaming out of the shofar from the essence of the heart. From the inner point of the heart. Deeper until speech can't contain it. Right? When something is just too, too how do you say, emotional, it touches you to the essence of your soul. So it's above emotions. It's just, it's just there's no, express, no way you can express it. It's just a, a voice. Therefore, ain Omar, but ain't Devorim, there's no word and there's no speech. Ella Bechinas Tekia Shofar. No speech can express our deep, essential longing for the Creator. Even if we're total Tzaddikim, we only do good our whole lives. We never did anything wrong. And that's the crawl of the shofar. The call of the shofar is a screaming out from the essence of the, of the soul to the essence of God. He called, this is just a simple voice. Therefore, you can't, there's no, it can't contain any words. That's the tekia. Then after that comes the shvorim. This is also the same thing, just a sound. It's no words, but <clears throat> there is a voice itself, many levels. Genuchi genuach. In Chabad especially, we sound, the, some people sound the, the shvorim. In Chabad, we sound it. There's, there's many voices within the voice, within the voice itself. It's genuchi genuach. It's moaning and moaning. Interestingly enough, if you learn in law, it says that they learned this. There was an evil person called Cicero. And Cicero, he wanted to destroy the Jews. And he went out happily to kill them all. And his mother was so proud of him. He was going out. And then she was waiting in the window for him to come back. And she saw that the army had been decimated. The Jews defeated them. And she was standing in the window waiting for Aim Sisro, the mother of Sisro, she was waiting in the window and she started to cry. And she cried, Genuchi Genuach, Yalil Yalil. It says, And from that we learn how to sound the shofar. <laughs> because there's a word there, the, the, the shofar. In any case, 
So that's also the same thing, is a call out from the essence of the soul to God. One is just a simple call and simple voice, and the other one is a broken voice. Okay, we didn't get the true yet. The true is, we'll see. An explanation that says, to you my heart says, Bakshu Panai, look for my inside, said God. Hainu Panai, Panimus Alev, open up the inside of your heart. There is, in the screaming out of the heart, there's an external heart and the internal heart and the out external heart. This has come from, from the, the external part of the heart. That comes from understanding. You understand how great God is, etc. How God is being created, it's creating everything from nothing to something, and the whole world is being created, and you don't feel it, you don't see it, so you cry out to God. All the hosts of the heavens, the upper heavens, the lower heavens, everything that's in it, in his great goodness, God creates the world all the time. And when a person thinks about this, as then a person cries out from his heart, but that's the external part of his heart. He's a thirst, he's thirsting for God. He wants more spirituality. He wants to get away from his bad, from the bad that he did. But, one second. <clears throat> okay, that's all called the external heart. That's all called the external heart because it's me and God. I am far away. I want to get close. But God himself, he's infinitely further away than anything that we can appreciate. This first type of, of screaming out of the heart comes from your appreciation, your understanding. But God, in his essence, is infinitely distant from our understanding. <clears throat> Levado, even God's name, it says, is infinitely distant from us. There's no thought that can possibly grasp God. I am God, I never changed. Like it says, just like before the world, so it is after the world. There's no way of understanding this. That's like it's, we say that God is a melech, a marum, a mavad, a So there's two aspects of God. One is our God creates us. And the other aspect of God is totally above and beyond any aspect of limitation, even speaking and creating the world, etc. <clears throat> he says this second level, this is what's going to talk about, we're going to talk about tomorrow. And this is the level of the inside of the heart screaming out in the sound of the shofar. And that's what we're talking about, Atem Netzavim, that we're standing today. That's the name of this week's Torah portion. And this will arouse the Brit, the connection between us and God, as we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's go to seek. Oh.